Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's October 25th, 2022. Let's talk World Series. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, both teams, the Phillies and the Astros, are red hot. The Phillies are 9-2 and two in their last 11 playoff games. The Astros are trying to make history and are even better. They're 7-0 and oh in the postseason. Since 1969, in the divisional playoff era, only one team, perhaps the best I have ever seen, the legendary Big Red Machine, of 1976 has gone unbeaten in the playoffs and they only had to go 7-0 and to win the World Series. Now, make no mistake, most of my money is on the Astros. I believe the Astros are the better team with home field advantage. Because I bet futures, I have money on both teams. I'll tell you how I'm going to play it, but first let's talk about why the Astros have the best chance of winning the World Series. Minute Maid Park, the Astros' home field, is a smaller venue, right? Less than 45,000 fans with a great (laughs) fan culture and some peculiarities, peculiarity, (laughs) some eccentricities. It has a big left field wall, right? Huge. If you're not from Boston, you're not accustomed to it. It has a raised center field, right? A portion of which is behind the warning track in front of the outfield wall. It has asymmetrical distances from home plate to the outfield wall. It has a retractable roof that might throw off a visiting team the first time an outfielder looks up for a fly ball and sees a roof that might not have been there the prior game. Let me just say, I understand the Phillies playing the National League. They've certainly been to Minute Maid Park before, but these are the playoffs, and these eccentricities matter, right? So... The venue is going to give the Astros a huge advantage in the early home games, game one and two. Plus, Philly is bad on the road, right? Just understand that the early games provide momentum for the later games. If the Astros come out and win the first two games of this World Series, They're going to feel good about themselves. This is a team that won 51 games on the road. They'll have the upper hand. Philly fans are going to realize they're going to have to win four of five games to come back in the series. And understand, if the Astros win the first two, right, the best case scenario, the best case scenario for the Phillies would be to win the World Series in Houston, which is daunting. Now understand, while the Phillies can match the Astros in run production, they simply can't in pitching. A 290 ERA is good for a pitcher. For many starters, both starters, a 2.90 ERA would be a career year. Folks, that's the team ERA for the Houston Astros. Only the Dodgers had a lower team ERA. Right, so the difference is going to be the pitching. The million dollar question here is whether Philly bats can topple Astro pitching or whether Philly pitching can match Astro pitching. I doubt it. I think the Astros win the series. But there are wild cards. Bryce Harper, 
a two-time MVP, is one of the few in the sport who can carry a team. I don't care about the regular season numbers, right? Just like I didn't with Reggie Jackson in 1977. Like Reggie, Bryce Harper is a nuclear weapon. So much so that in the 11 playoff games that Philly has played this postseason, Bryce Harper by himself has 11 RBIs. Right? Understand, this is a sport where if a guy hits 300, we say, oh, he had a good postseason. In the NLDS this postseason, Bryce Harper hit 500. Right? In the NLCS, the National League Championship Series, Bryce Harper hit 400. Let's talk about another possible scenario, and it's one gamblers need to think about. Right now, the Astros are thinking history. They have to know we're 7-0 right now. 7-0. If we sweep, if we sweep this World Series, we'll be the only team with an 11-0 postseason in Major League history, right? Think about that. In situations like this, there could be a possible letdown, psychologically, from losing the winning streak. In other words, if the Astros go out and lose game one, this is the worst case scenario, then people in Houston are panicking Everyone will realize that the Astros have given away the home field advantage. More importantly, game two would become almost existential. Because understand, if you lose game two and are down 0-2, it would be the Astros who would have to win four of the last five games. And understand, Philly at home during the regular season this year, was 13 games over 500. So let's talk about the way I'm playing it. I have money on both already, but I have more money on the Astros. I'll be watching game one, right? I'm not going to place a further bet here, but I'm going to be watching game one. If the Astros win, and Philly rises to a plus 180 or higher, right? You're getting Philly right now at over a plus 140. If Philly rises to a plus 180 after a game one loss, then I'm going to bet Philly as a series hedge, right? And should Philly win game two for a possible return? Right? Because understand, all Philly has to do is win one of the first two games to grab home field advantage. So if the Astros win game one, because I'm a contrarian, because I'm looking for long odds, right? This is about rate of return. Because I have more money on the Astros, I'm going to take Philly in the series bet, right? Not for game two, but in the series bet, if I get a plus 180. So if Philly wins the series, right, it could be in five if Philly wins four in a row, right, wins game two and then gets hot and wins the next three. Let's remember, this is a team that's nine and two this postseason. Then I'm a happy camper. It could be Philly in six, Philly in seven. If I'm getting a plus 180, I'm being compensated for the risk. Now, if... That's if the Astros win game one. If the Astros lose game one, then I'm going to stay on the sidelines. I'm going to wait for game two. Right? Because if the Astros then lose game two, even though they won 51 games on the road this year, I'm going to take the Phillies 
because the Phillies would be up 2-0. Asking any team to win four of five games is hard to do, especially if the other side has Bryce Harper. Right, so to sum up, I'm expecting the Astros to win the World Series, right? That's the overview. The betting strategy for me, since I have more money on the Astros than on Philly, the betting strategy is if the Astros win game one and the line jumps to Philly at plus 180 or higher, then I'm going to take Philly for the series, right? Because that's a hedge for me. And because the plus 180 is a very nice rate of return or higher, right? Possible rate of return. I'm compensated for the risk taking the team down 0-1, right, in the series. If the Astros lose game one, I'm going to wait for game two to play out because if Philly then wins game two, I believe I'd be able to get Philly still since the Astros won over 100 games, well over 100 games this year, and since Philly didn't win 90. I believe even with Philly up 2-0 in the series going back to Philly, I believe I'd be able to get Philly at a minus 150 or lower. And there'd be a lot less risk. If Philly's up 2-0, looking at a game three in Philly, right? At that stage, Philly would be in this playoff series, well, in the playoff, this playoff year, 11-2, and two, going into game three in Philadelphia. So that's how I'm playing it. Let me know how you're playing it. Share some insight with other subscribers here. We're all gamblers. Let us know in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.